What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be going over a whole bunch of new stuff at DLT Trading and some predictions for stuff that is going to land in the future. Metal Complex, why would we sit here and watch you do this when we can simply go to the website and do it ourselves? You're right! I will make that super convenient. Uh, right down in the description, I will link the new arrivals page for DLT. Hinderer knives, Demco knives, all right, all the stuff that you guys want, and individual things that I'm going to highlight in this video, so you can simply jump right to the page. Uh, but if you want to sit here and listen to my commentary, then you are, of course, welcome to. We are at the end of the year, so while there seems to not be a whole bunch of stuff right now at retailers, trust me. <laughs> there is a, a new wave coming. In fact, there are multiple waves coming. A lot of people tell me, why would I even try to get Hinders or Demcos? I don't have time to sit there in front of my computer and refresh the page over and over and over again. That's not what people are doing uh, to get their hands on these. I want to, uh, you know, set this straight. People are not sitting in front of their computer refreshing over and over and over again. Uh, the Hinder Knives Users and Collectors Group updates people on when knives are headed out to retailers. Oftentimes, retailers like DLT Trading on their Instagram will actually let people know, hey, we have an exclusive that's dropping on this day at this time, right? People like me try to update you guys in my community tab and say, hey, I think this is about to drop here or here. Basically, what I'm saying is I understand that it's frustrating to try and get your hands on things that seem elusive and rare and expensive on top of that. But if you make no effort, you will never get your hands on this stuff. Uh, the best thing that you can do right now is number one, go to the retailer of your choice, DLT in this case, sign up for email notifications, follow them on Instagram, make sure you subscribe to me, follow the corresponding maker that you're after, follow their Facebook group, right, so that you can get updates. Much easier than sitting in front of your computer refreshing. I can assure you that is not how people are getting their hands on these things. But anyways, stuff is coming. Definitely. So we're at the hinderer page right now on DLT Trading, and you can see, oh, everything's sold out except for assess accessories, right? This was the most recent drop, very recent. We had hinderer field tax. We had scales. There's still a whole bunch of scales there, by the way. Um, so if you're looking for something for your XM24, three and a half inch, or your half track, maybe you're looking for some hardware, this stuff is there. We also had, I don't know if they're actually going to show the sold listings. Um, we also had some XM18 three and a half inch models drop, and a lot of times they pull the sold listings um, if they have been around, like if the model itself has been around for a while. Look at this, we got titanium hardware for the three inch. There's lots of stuff there, some pins. Um, but yeah, they did actually have, if I go up to the three and a half inch right here, Morse, uh, Morse most recently says it says no products in this category. They probably removed the sold listings of the three and a half inch. Um, right alongside those fire tax, those of you who are watching uh, or subscribed to my channel and saw that community post, you probably did get your hands on a, a working finish three and a half inch spear point. Those did drop here recently. I've noticed hinder stuff seems to be dropping every two to three weeks at DLT Trading and probably a lot of other retailers. So if you're trying to get your hands on that stuff, yeah more of that is coming. And I would imagine we're going to see some pretty big drops and probably some fairly new things from Hinderer Knives specifically from now until the end of the year. Um, also, uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to tell you guys, it's the exact same thing. It's what I, I actually just recently made a post about this in the community tab. There are AD20s coming. There are AD20s coming. There's none here right now, but there are definitely AD20s coming. Uh, in my post, somebody had said, um, you know, I think that was, uh, the picture was from a while ago. It was indicating a drop from a while ago. No, uh, there are AD 20s coming. If you're trying to get your hands on an American AD 20, um, definitely be paying attention because those are going to be around. Um, let's go ahead and go to the new arrivals page and I'll tell you guys what's here right now, but expect to see a lot more, um, coming, uh, from, oh, there was another thing. Well, we'll go, we'll head back to that. Expect to see a lot more at DLT Trading and um, other uh, major retailers in uh, future months. We have some RGT Chris Reeve uh, Timascus Pocket Clips, which are pretty cool. I've heard those are made really, really well. Some people prefer them. In fact, a lot of people prefer them heavily over the standard clip. Uh, yeah, it's a $135 pocket clip, but you know, obviously people are into it because these are selling. So those are definitely there right now. Some fixed blades. I, I wish I was more into this style of traditional fixed blade. I'm just not. There's a Hera there. Those are really, really expensive. So they do fire nice. Uh, the firing power uh, of the Hera is definitely nice. Heretic Nephilim, it looks really cool. I don't know anything about it. That is a ridiculously expensive fixed blade. If you were to ask me right now, what in the heck makes that thing so expensive? I would not have an answer for you. This is a US made fixed blade. Um, LMAX DLC G10. 
Yikes. It looks cool. Come on, though. $541? Why? <laughs> like, does it does it turn into a, a coffee maker? Does, like, what else does it do? You know, I just don't understand. This right here, the Spyderco and Della, uh, red and black zone. So they have both the... Um, the coded the dlc version of this it says black i don't know if it's actually a dlc usually with spider co it is it just says black coded uh they have this version and they have the satin version of this knife this is one of the best deals on 20 cv right now at least as far as 20 cv blades that you can rest assured are heat treated correctly right people always yell out brands I bought this knife from Wish that says 20 CV and it was only $40. You got ripped off. <laughs> if you're shopping on Wish, your knife isn't real. Sorry, that's going to sting a lot of people. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's one of the best deals out there uh, for 20 CV right now. Um, I think the black one looks a little bit better at $120. This is an Andela, so it's also one of the, um, you know, as far as like a performance cutting edge. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If you can get around the lockback thing, which truthfully, if I was going to carry a lockback, the Indela would absolutely be in the running. I will link this guy down below um, to make sure that you guys know where that is. That is, uh, don't sleep on that one. That's a fantastic, fantastic EDC knife. Absolutely. There are still some, uh, let's see, this is Bog Oak, uh, small Sabenza 31 in Boomerang Damascus. There's still a, a bunch of these Damascus small Sabenza 31s that are there. A lot of the larger ones sold very, very quickly, right? But if you like the small size Sabenza and maybe you want a dressy one, then there you go. Some Eclipse scales. I thought about picking up one of these for myself here recently. If you want to dye it some custom color, well, there you go. It's white. You can just dye it whatever you want. I think they also have the jade one as well. Some flashlights, eh, right? Uh, Battle Horse. Don't know anything about Battle Horse um, fixed blades. They look nice. I'm kind of curious what they're made out of. Are these, I'm going to guess this is a USA. Yeah, USA. Blade Steel is 01. Hinder uses 01, but on his vintage knives, I think 01 is actually a steel that a lot of people, a lot of bushcraft people, I, <coughs> it's not my world. I wish that I could say that it was. I've heard that 01 is a preferable steel for working outside. You just have to make sure that you're, you know, cleaning it off and adding uh, protective oil for sure. Ah, uh, some Hydras. Um, why are these so expensive? Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Heretic Hydra Tanto Edge JG10 Black Hardware Two-Tone Blade. Uh, no. No. Why, why did these, did these just take a huge price jump? So the, uh, the, the attraction to the Hydra, to me, if I remember correctly, was the fact that it was a hard firing single action OTF made in the United States that was nowhere near the cost of the Microtech Halo 6. Yeesh. Wow, that's expensive. Okay. RGT Spyderco PM2 clips if you want something really fancy and special for your PM2. Um, that's actually a pretty good clip, and I would definitely prefer that clip over the standard one. Oh, somebody's trying to call me. Not right now. Sorry. Anyways, uh, moving on here, we do have some more um, Ultra Tech. This is apparently a signature series, uh, UTX-85. I thought it was an Ultra Tech. That's a UTX-85. If you're looking for the UTX-85, there you go. Truthfully, unless you need that small of a blade, I would suggest that you uh, bump up to the Ultratech. These, I'm sure more of these are coming. I own one, it's awesome, very, very cool. Protech Runt 5, I have one of these here right now and this is excellent. Let me point this out to you guys. This is, uh, a lot of people looked at this and I know, I, I know some people know, but there are definitely people watching who don't know. This is in 20 CV. $134.95 for a US made auto. It's a tiny guy, right? But again, it's not like only big knife capable knife. Oh, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big old, you know, I'm a, I'm a big old rough guy. I can't, I can't be carrying around a small knife. Come on, get that out of here. Get that out of here. Tw uh, small knife absolutely does come in handy from time to time. And it's also nice if you're traveling. Now this is an auto, so you still have to abide by auto laws. But if you're traveling between, you know, from state to state uh, and they have restrictions on blade length for automatic knives, um, this is a knife that you could potentially carry with you because it's only got a 1.96 inch blade. US made, 20 CV. Yeah, they fire super hard though for, so, for being so tiny. 
They fire super hard. Um, these are really nice. Uh, you guys haven't seen the review on this one yet, but when it comes out, spoiler alert, it is a ridiculously positive review. Um, Chavez Scapegoat, I'm sure more of these are coming. The Finch Devil's Finger, this is a good knife. I think this one's a DLT trading exclusive. I think this is, not many people know about this exclusive. Uh, the Devil's Finger is in 154CM. Yeah. 154CM, Micarta, Countersunk Steel Liner Lock, and this one, the Brown Micarta, is a DLT exclusive. This is a nice knife. It's a pretty straightforward day-to-day -day knife with a pretty straightforward design, straightforward price. There's really nothing crazy going on here. Um, but it is a good EDC knife, and it has that glow crest. Uh, you guys will see it in the review. That uh, crest does glow, which is... Kind of gimmicky, but it's also not really hurting anything. You can also mount the clip uh, for left-handed carry. So lefties, even though, you know, right-handed liner lock, you can still carry it. That's a good knife. Also a positive review you guys have not seen yet. Well, they have it in red as well. That's cool. Ah, uh, axes, hatchets, things like that. There are still some Medford Praetorian Genesis ties sitting here. Yeah, they're expensive, right? People have like really, you know, like it, to the knife itself. Think what you want about Greg Medford. I'm not here to critique him. But for the knives themselves, people get very emotional. Ugh! Yeah, it's expensive. Do I think they're worth the money? Um, I think $1,800 buys you a lot in today's knife world. But it also depends on what it is that you're looking for. If you're looking for something sleek and modern and, you know, very... Um, Oh, I, I suppose it has the appearance of being overly polished, uh, and uh, oh, you know, and not polished like I mean, like in the in the um, metaphorical sense, right? Well, then, yeah, you can buy yourself something like that. Um, but as far as the materials used, I mean, this this just takes a different end form, right? Uh, is as much work in this as something like a what is it? This is probably custom showgraph realm. I don't know, probably not. I would say a, uh, a little bit more goes into that, but if you're not looking for something like that, if you're not, if that's not your style, then there's no reason to, you know, spend money on something like that, right? Um, I've owned a Praetorian tie before. I remember paying something like $1,300 for it. And I remember at that time thinking, eh, it was also a lot more simple than some of this stuff. Some of this stuff has a little bit more going on. And I gotta admit, Stuff like this, right? And people are immediately going to go, 1850 for S35VN, blah! Reducing it to the materials is meaningless, right? It's meaningless. It's the amount of work that went into this. Um, you might like this, you might not. This is kind of a trypophobia sort of uh, handle scale. Uh, the blade is awesome, though. And uh, regardless of what people say, a lot of people who say, you know, Medfords are clunky are people who are reporting on what they read on blade forms in 2014. Um, more recently, no, they are not. They also absolutely do slice and cut. But you're pushing a very thick wedge. In this case, just so you guys know, you're pushing a very, if you're going to use a knife like this, just understand, down at the edge, yeah, this is a 3V blade, by the way, down at the edge, yeah, it's plenty thin to slice, plenty, but the blade stock thickness is a quarter inch, a little over a quarter inch, so you're going to ultimately be pushing that wedge through um, <laughs> whatever it is you're cutting. Maybe you're not going to use it, right? This is one of those things where if it's worth it to you, then go for it. I had to buy one to find out for myself, right? And there's a, there is a part of me that misses it. They are here. For those of you who don't like Medford knives, don't let it ruin your day. They exist. Don't be bothered by their existence. For those of you who enjoy them, there you go. The Genesis tie is the medium-sized one. So make sure you look at all the dimensions and everything like that before you pick something up. Heretic Wraiths are here. Those also seem to be a little bit more expensive. Maybe that's just my imagination. 750, 650 for the Hydra. I just can't believe that. RGT Spyderco Smock Scales, uh, Microtech, UTX85, UTX85, Boker Plus USB. Very interested in getting one of these for review. I think that looks pretty cool. Price looks pretty good. Really would like to take a look at one of those. Also, the Hogue Exploit also looks interesting. I don't know why we're so, well, you know what? 271 bucks, that's pretty competitive. Considering their direct competition, if this is US made, what do we have here? S30V in aluminum. Yeah, very competitive with um, the, uh, stop, geez, somebody is really, do you know those call it? We've been trying to reach you about your vehicle's extended warranty. Like, oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I can't do I cannot take those calls. Oh, I hate that so much, right? So does everybody. Join the club. Anyways, Hogue Exploit. What are the this is an 8.3 inch overall OTF with a blade length of three and a half inches. If you don't know, Hogue makes an excellent quality knife. US made. So direct competition would be the um Manticore, one of the um one of the Manticores from uh from uh, oh my gosh uh, heretic uh, the ultra tech from microtech and the guardian tactical recon 35 right the real competition i'm not talking i'm not talking about those poopy knives that uh, people are being tricked into thinking that they're actually made in the united states they're not the real competition the ones that i listed there and some of bench made knives right just because i didn't list a retailer or a manufacturer doesn't mean i'm saying i'm just saying some of you know exactly who i'm talking about um, but yeah, the real competition there. Um, yeah, this looks really interesting. Uh, I think I'd like to get my hands on one of these for, I might have to see if there's anybody who's got one of these that would like to send it in for review. Of course, you'll get it back. People think that everybody who sends me a knife, I just keep it. No, I send those back, you silly geese. Um, but yeah, the Hogue Exploit looks pretty good at $271 for what I'm guessing is the base material. There's the 20 CV Indela. Uh, in the satin finished blade. This is the one I have here. It's as good as every under, other Indela, which means it's it's good. Uh, it's just way better than the VG10. This is 108 bucks. <laughs> what is a VG10 Indela run? I'm curious. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, okay, yeah. Indela Lightweight runs $87. There's a K391 for $131. Thin blue line. Yeah, so they do have the... That's interesting. I didn't know they had the k 3 But look at this. $87 for what I am almost certain is VG10. Yeah. Yay! Wow! VG10. People are going to get mad at me. VG10 is a great steal. Eh... It'll work. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's it, it's tougher and easier to sharpen than 20 CV, but I'll take 20 CV, uh, definitely, right? Um, so yeah, there you go. That one's definitely available too. And let's see, what else do we have? RGT Spyderco pair of three scales. I'm gonna go back uh, basically until I find it. They still have one of those um, death card. Ultra Techs that are sitting there. They also have a Combat Troodon Hellhound in Jade. Um, that's a, I guess, a special one. There's a great example of way too much money. Like, seriously. This is cool. This is cool. But I own this knife. Uh, it's in all aluminum and does not have a black blade, right? So there's that's, that's what's going on here. Signature Series. This is half aluminum and half G10 and has DLC coating. Uh, I paid, actually my wife paid $600 for this knife. <laughs> this is cool, but where's the, what's, where's the extra $387 coming from, right? I, I mean, like, I understand a lot of people think like you do these to get people to buy things. No, I do these to let you guys know what is there. And, but I always comment, commentate fairly if I think something is overpriced, right? You buy whatever you want, but the goal of this is not you know, specific, it, of course, when you buy something, uh, you know, through this video, it absolutely, absolutely benefits my channel. But the goal is not to push you into buying things. The goal is to just look over what's new. These are cool, but this is once again, another um, ridiculous price on a signature series knife. Frag handle, black blade, signature series. Frag handle, so what, aluminum? Uh, what is it? Blade, thickness, finish, edge style, handle, material, black, frag, aluminum. Um, is there a special blade steel? No, it's going to be 204P or something like that. 724, why? These, the base price of these is $290. I could understand if they wanted like 350 for it, but 724, my gosh. Don't don't do that. Buy a regular Ultra Tech. That's that's just crazy. I don't understand. These William Henry uh, button locks look interesting. They are very expensive. But then again, like for example, something like this. If you're gonna spend six hundred on a knife, there's quite a bit more that went into this. 
Um, not necessarily a massive amount more, but there's more going on with this knife. Titanium, silver twill, blade steel ZDP 189, but I believe it's cord. Yeah, it's San Mai ZDP. Um, so something like this, right? We have a decorative button lock, silver twill inlay, titanium. Not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but this is an example of something that has a lot more going on, right? I'm not saying I would spend 600 on that, but if you do, if you're the type of person who does, I would say that was a smarter decision than $724 on an Ultratech that's got a different texture and a black blade. Yikes. XM18, three and a half inch scales. Praetorian T. Uh, if you're gonna go, like if you don't need the thick ones, just understand you'll save more than, like this is a full size Praetorian, right? PVD 3V. Instead of being massively thick, like the uh, Genesis tie that we saw, it's the same thing except bigger overall, not thicker just longer. In this case, we have a 3V blade, titanium, right? Just a non, it doesn't have any like crazy finish on there. And you're paying less than half for it, like substantially less than half. I think between 600 and $800 is a fair price to pay for a Medford, um, unless you're buying something really crazy with a lot of extra machine work or finish work on it. So some of those Genesis ties are gonna be more or less appealing. Not the one we were just talking about. The Genesis ties. The thicker ones at the beginning are going to be more or less appealing to people. Spend spend your money on what you want. Not gonna not gonna judge you on that. I'm just I'm gonna say what I think in the moment. Uh, having handled, let me think about this. I've owned a uh, Praetorian T, Praetorian tie. I've owned a uh, two different one eight sevens, three different one eight sevens. One was the flipper. Um. And was there another Medford that I've... Oh, I've owned um, two, <laughs> no, three Medford Marauders. And this is over uh, a five-year period watching their quality get better and better and better. I've also reviewed countless Medfords, handled a Genesis tie, uh, they, uh, a different uh, micro Praetorian, micro Praetorian tie. Uh, I've handled the Infraction, the uh, Slim Midi, right? The... Um, uh, the, uh, what do they call that? The Praetorian Slim. I've handled all of those, right? So I have my fair share of experience with them. Their, their um, quality has gotten better. Some of them, the price is a bit high. Some of them seems a bit more spot on. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot judge any knife through a rectangle. It looks like it's, stop, you, until you handle and experience it, you really don't even know how you feel. And I'm saying that not to um, talk down to people, but I used to judge the same way. Looking at pictures of knives and stats and judging things on materials, I used to have very specific, very, you know, heavy emotional thoughts about this stuff until I handled it. And then I changed my mind. Now, some people are going to say, well, I have handled it and I don't like it. Well, there you go. You came to the conclusion that you needed to come to. I think we're back to the point where we've pretty much, gee, mask is what, Hogue compound clip, what is this model? It can't be called the compound clip point. I think we're back to the point where I've seen a lot of this stuff. J.E. Made, Swayback, J.E. Made, uh, Sog Pentagon, anything in here that we have not seen yet. We're back to some of these William Henry, B10, et cetera. All right. So guys, I'm going to link um, a lot of the stuff that I highlighted right down in the description. Again, if you've made it to the end of the video here, I say to you again, I want you guys to be able to get your hands on the stuff that you want. The reason that I have a, an affiliate program with DLT Trading is specifically because they get a lot of that stuff and a, they get frequent waves of it. Coming up on the end of the year, there are waves coming. Be paying attention to DLT. Um, make sure you go into the specific knife you're after and sign up for your email notifications. Is it a perfect system? From what I've heard, no. From every retailer that I have ever worked with, well, when I say that, I mean an affiliate program. Every retailer I've ever talked to, every, every uh, retailer Instagram account I've ever gone to look at and heard people's complaints, apparently these systems don't work perfectly, right? Um, they have worked for me in the past. Uh, but your experience may vary. In any case, it is your best chance if you are busy throughout the majority of your day. A lot of times it's your best chance to get your hands on some of this stuff. So 
uh, you know, minimum effort could get you what you want if you're after something specific. In any case, I hope that this was at least mildly entertaining. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.